Each and every moment. At every drumbeat. Heard throughout the world. Another life is given the opportunity. To have yet another heartbeat. Every statistic has a story. And every story has a face. Our hands are not tied. 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 Africa is rising. We hear stories of the devastation of Africa by HIV AIDS. But progress is being made today in Africa against this deadly disease. Africans are working with people from around the world. We are making progress to prevent and treat HIV AIDS in Africa. We are finding ways to help children orphaned by AIDS. Much more needs to be done, but we are making progress. Our hands are not tied. I'm Ken Hackett. I'm the president of Catholic Relief Services. In terms of the HIV and AIDS pandemic, it is much worse than when I started in 1968. It didn't exist at that time. The pandemic has devastated communities, families, individuals. It has changed the entire demography of Africa. And I can only predict that we're in for maybe one more generation before hopefully they will find some kind of a cure. Once a starving child in Ghana, Thomas Awiapo was orphaned at the age of 10 to AIDS. Today, Thomas lends his hands to orphans throughout Africa as a Catholic Relief Services staff member. He conveys the alarming effects of AIDS in his homeland, Ghana. People keep pointing fingers at you, and that feeling alone kills you faster than even the disease itself. Brian Keith lends his hands in powering orphans in Zimbabwe. Brian has discovered Africa is not a black hole of problems. It is full of leaders willing to empower orphans in their communities. I was visiting a eight-year-old boy and a four-year-old girl um, who are going to become orphaned because of AIDS. Their names were Peterson and Prudence. Uh, his sister, because she was born with HIV, she couldn't walk because uh, she just hadn't developed properly. So he used to carry her on his back for a year, and he took her to a local hospital each day to get physical therapy while he was in school, and then he would pick her up and carry her home about a mile and a half each way. He was caring for her. He was working the family farm, taking care of the goats. Uh, he lived by himself for a year, and then she passed away because of AIDS, and then he lived by himself for another six months before uh, a distant relative took him in. Joan Neal is the Vice President for U.S. Operations for Catholic Relief Services. One of our staff people from Zambia, Bridget Chisenga, was uh, here speaking to groups. She is HIV positive, and I was with her on her very first uh, speaking engagement here in the U.S. And to hear her story about how the antiretroviral therapy has really brought her back to life, has given her hope for herself and for her family, uh, was really one of the most touching uh, experiences that I have had. I'm not living with AIDS. I'm HIV positive. So at the moment, I'm beyond AIDS. The things that we take for granted here in the United States, like access to these antiretroviral therapy drugs, are not available for people like Bridget. And until the AIDS relief and the, the President's initiative and other uh, HIV AIDS relief efforts began to take hold, um, this disease was a death sentence for people. PEPFAR is the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief. The original program of PEPFAR in 2003 was one of the most dramatic statements of solidarity between Americans and the people exposed to HIV AIDS throughout the developing countries. Because of the success brought about by the $15 billion in the original program, lawmakers in Washington both Democrats and Republicans have joined together with the President to find ways to extend the PEPFAR HIV AIDS program for yet another five years. Brian Keith, President of Forgotten Voices, located in Pennsylvania, works with local people providing funding for vulnerable children in Africa. Every statistic that they hear about Africa has a story, and every story is connected to a story of hope uh, and a future and promise, and every kid will eventually be a mom and a dad. And, and that's probably the most surprising thing. That that's been very difficult for the typical person that I talk to here in America to grasp. Nicholas DeMay is the communications officer at the Global Fund headquarters located in Switzerland. 
Nicholas works directly each day, funding those with HIV AIDS, tuberculosis and malaria throughout the world. When you actually see what the Global Fund is doing and, and see what is being done with Global Fund resources in implementing countries, you, you really get driven for what you're actually doing. You, it really motivates you because you have seen people who who are suffering from HIV AIDS and they tell you their story of how all of a sudden they got access to ARV treatment and although they are they are HIV infected that they are able to lead a normal life thanks to these these medications. When Americans think of problems in Africa, they always think about giving money. But the strongest way of providing support is to urge your lawmakers to support laws to make available long-term development programs for health, education, and food production. Catholic Relief Services leaders Joe Neal and Ken Hackett speak about how your voices can be heard and how you can lend a helping hand. We're trying to get um, uh, people to sign up for our legislative network. Uh, this is an internet-based network which will both educate people about the PEPFAR uh, legislation, but then also give them the opportunity to send directly to their Congress people their advocacy with regard to reauthorization. It's an easy way to make our voices heard, but it's a really important thing for us to do. We're also trying to encourage university students to engage. It's easy. Y you can send a message to your congressional representatives by just before you start your homework tonight, just shoot one off to whoever is your representative. It'll make a profound difference. And, you know, people do think that their voices uh, won't be heard or that they won't make a difference. But it's our experience that uh, the congressional aides tell us that they themselves and the members of Congress do pay attention to the communications that they receive from citizens. So it's really important. Helping people here in the United States see that it's not so much just about giving money, but it's investing in the hopes and dreams of local people who are working hard every day to care for kids. These are the stories that really have an impact and that, that really impact your day-to-day -day job. When I wake up in the morning and I'm having a bad day or we have problems or donors aren't cooperating or something's going wrong, um, there is nothing going on in my life that compares to Peterson. And if he can get up, put a smile on and go to work, go to school, um, I can do the same. So I should do the same. I must do the same. With international community support, with support of countries like the United States and other international communities and all that, well, we'll be able to bring the HIV pandemic to an end and put it into history. Uh, that's my hope. And I, I just have to keep hoping like that and praying and working hard for that. People all over the world are using their hands to help Africa. Are you? Are you? Are you? Our hands are not tied. Yeah! <laughs>